Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here again for another Monday This and That video where I get to talk about a whole bunch of different topics, whatever I feel like talking about, but mostly coming back to whatever's going on currently around here and also to lead you back to some old videos where I go into more detail about some of the various things I'll be mentioning. Also to let you know some videos coming out soon. All right, so the first topic is the rhubarb. I'm finally, I should have got on this sooner, but my rhubarb's been going crazy. So I'm finally getting out there and getting it harvested. I just went out there and did it and it was raining of course right now. And for the first time in the several years I've had these particular rhubarb plants, I'm getting flowers. First time ever. I always forget that rhubarb actually flowers because it just takes so long. But the great thing is that you don't have to wait for it to flower to be able to get a lot of produce off of it. So what I'm doing with my rhubarb, I'm chopping it up and I'm freezing it so I can juice it in order to make wine. Because one of the things I discovered last year, it just in playing around with it because I had so much rhubarb, is that one of the many things you can use it for is making a wine. You can juice it just like you do anything else. But freezing at first really makes it easy to juice and it just presses the liquid right out of there and it makes an excellent wine if you do it right. So I have a recipe that I'll share with you down below in the description box and I call it rhubarb margarita wine because the interesting thing I found about a rhubarb is when you juice it, it tends to have a salty flavor which really surprised the heck out of me. But because of that, it gives the wine kind of a margarita flavor, especially if you add a little lime juice to it. So anyway, that's what I'm finally getting started on today with the rhubarb. Now, let's talk about a few other things. One of the videos I have coming out is about, it's going to be a few weeks before you see it, but it's just about natural chicken care and how you can help prevent your chickens from getting viruses. I compiled together a bunch of herbs that you can use to help with that. And so right here is my current blend of antiviral herbs that are, these are all dried and all but one of these are from my own garden. And what I'm doing is adding a handful of these to every one gallon bucket of feed that I mix up and so that they're getting those in their feed every day. And this particular blend has echinacea flowers and leaves, lemon balm, astragalus root, that's the one that I do not grow yet. I tried last year and it died on me, so I, I may try again soon. I don't know, I'm not gonna mess with it this year because I'm trying a bunch of other new herbs as well. Uh, chicory leaves, chicory's excellent. The chickens love it, fresh or dried, doesn't matter oregano and thyme. I think I might still be leaving something else out, but I covered that in that video that's coming out. But I wanted to go ahead and mention it again here, like I did in last week's video. If you got you got a lot of herbs coming in and you, you feel like you're already drying up enough for yourself for the year, things like oregano, peppermint, and all that kind of stuff just grows so prolifically that usually we can get far more than we need for even a year. So keep drying those up because you can add them to your chicken feed. Now I'm not putting the peppermint in there, but peppermint, especially fresh, is something great to add to their coop to help keep pests down. And I cover more of that in that video as well. And then another thing I wanted to bring up, and this is in regards to a video that just came out this last week on Thursday about the on tips on foraging wild food and medicine. Remember, I think some people kind of misunderstood what it was about. It was about giving you tips on how to identify. And I just picked a few as examples, but how you go about that, I recommend you watch that video. But what I want you to understand, that wasn't about me going over the medicinal properties of each of the things I mentioned. I do already have videos out that are pretty in depth on the dandelion and the yarrow. I plan on doing one on turkey, turkey tail. I didn't mention the old man's beard in that particular video, but I plan on doing one on that. But my playlist, it has, I've been working on it since 2016. And so it's getting longer all the time. And I still have a great many more herbs I plan on covering and going into that playlist. So I'll link to that full playlist down below. So if you're looking for the benefits and medicinal uses of the various herbs, please go to the playlist. Even the few I mentioned in the foraging video, if I was to break each one of those down and cover their medicinal benefits in that video alone, it would have been at least an hour and a half long, that whole video. But that's not what that video was about. So just remember, 
whenever I mention stuff like that, I do try to remember to put those links in the description box down below. Sometimes I say I'm going to put a link in and simply space it and don't get it in there. That's why I often need people to help remind me that, oops, I didn't get that in there. So if I mention it and it's not there, just remind me and I'll give it to you and I'll put it in the description box. And then another thing garden related I wanted to bring up is that my red gooseberry out front is doing it's beautiful it's really filling in good just like it did last year at this time before the saw flies came and totally decimated it and then right after that it left the berries in place and the berries were just starting to get ripe and right after that was when we had that very weird three-day heat wave that got up to 118 degrees in our area which I think is hot for pretty much any area but especially for where we're at because we're a cooler climate and it fried all of my gooseberries every single gooseberry because the leaves had all been chewed off by the saw flies so there was nothing there to give them shade where they left my currants alone some of my currants did get burnt but most of my currants were fine because they still had all their leaves to protect the berries. So this year I'm getting, I'm making sure I pay close attention and spray my plant down, likely on a daily basis is what I'll have to do it. I'm right about to that point that it's time to start doing that, but um, I've been kind of holding off until I absolutely have to just because it's still raining and it's going to keep rinsing everything off. And so what I'm using, I'm keeping my solution simple this year, and I'm just going neem oil, a little dish soap, and a natural dish soap, and some water. And I'm, I spray the plant down, and what you want to do whenever you're using anything that's got a pesticide, be it natural, like neem oil. Neem oil, neem oil is great. It's actually very healthy for mammals but it's toxic to any insects. What you have to know about that, and it will kill them on contact, by the way, and what you have to understand about that is you don't want to spray it during the time of the day when your bees are active. So, and like with the gooseberries, I want to wait till it's done flowering so the bees aren't going to be around there as much anyway, and then spray it in the evening after the bees are done for the day because you we want to obviously keep our pollinators healthy and we don't want to be killing our pollinators so anyway um, I don't remember the actual measurements I used on there but I recommend looking up neem oil I use an organic neem oil it has many uses and it's like I think a couple of tablespoons I used in this and this is a, a 24 ounce bottle and then maybe a tablespoon of dish soap. I so rarely measure things. I just put stuff in it and then just mix it with water. Shake it up real good before you use it. What the soap will do is that will help that stick to the plants and it also, the soap on its own will also help deter pests as well. And it can be totally non-toxic and safe to all your pets and yourself. As is a neem oil, it's totally natural. So anyway, I wanted to bring that up. So if you, you want this getting pests that are eating whatever it is just look into the neem oil and making up something that you can spray on there but just do not use it during the day while the bees are active oh you can also use it on your roses to prevent and kill fungus that fungus that gets on your rose bushes and then another thing I wanted to bring up is that I haven't mentioned it in a while but uh, several months back I did a video on the honey honey as in it's a there's a few different programs out there and it was my son that got me to sign up for it and it's a totally free program that actually pays you so it's just another way to make money as well as save money in fact today I just signed up for the first time for butcher box and where they have all grass-fed naturally raised meats and it's a really good deal and I was able to get with the honey I was actually able to get ten dollars off my first order just by let just by using the honey program which looks for coupons so it saves you money but you can also earn money and I go over all that in that video I don't have time to cover all that here so please go check out that video I'll link it down below where I cover the many ways that you can use honey to eat to either make money or save money and I so far have earned I so far made like $170 off of honey. A lot of it coming from either people signing up under my honey link, which you can do too. It's a referral link, which means anybody can do that. You share your, your referral link. Somebody else goes through that, signs up for honey. They can save money and you can earn like $10 for every person that signs up. 
So between that and doing a lot of my shopping through Vitacost, because I earn cash back through Vitacost by using Honey, I've made $170 so far. That's pretty good. So anyway, I just wanted to share that real quick because I don't always think to mention it. And I know there's other programs that work similar. Honey's the one that I know. And now let's talk about those quilt blocks. So Patrick is actually out and about right now and he's going to be checking the mail to see if I have any more. But I have the two. I'll go ahead and put the two pictures here. And if you're wanting more information on the quilt blocks, you can check out that video I'll link to down below about the collaborations. There's going to be several that I'm doing with my subscribers. One of them is the crazy quilt. The other ones are photo related ones. Those are the easiest ones. So uh, keep sending me those photos of things that you've made based off of sewing projects or crochet projects. But if you don't sew or crochet, remember I'll have more topics coming up like fermenting and herbs and so on and so forth. Anything that has to do with something you've learned from my video. So uh, I'll let you know the details of those more as those ones come up. But for more details on the two that are going on right now, just go ahead and check out that video. But I do want to remind you those quilt blocks need to be 10 inches. Come, that's the total size 10 by 10 squares not 12 by 12 not 8 by 8 the only thing that's unfinished of the on them are the edges everything else should be done just a thin batting doesn't have to be thick in fact i prefer it wasn't and quilted so it's completed everything but the edges on it and then i'll be putting that quilt together once i get enough pieces and i'll keep you updated and let you know when I have enough. If you're sending some from another country, please email me and let me know they're coming in so I know to expect them and wait for them to come in. So I'm expecting it's going to be at least a couple of months before I actually start putting the quilt together because I want to give people plenty of time to get one made up and get it shipped to me, especially if it's coming from the other side of the world and then I'll start putting the quilt together. But just remember, I'll keep you updated here in the community section and any other place I can reach out to let you know when I have plenty of squares. And before I close, I'll go ahead and talk about what's going on back here. I don't always think to mention, usually you'll see something going on back here in this corner. So I got another one of my citrus peel drinks fermenting, which now I only do let it go for about a week. I want it to still have some sweetness, but be very, very fizzy. And so I find a week to be perfect. I think in the video I did on that, which I'll also link down below, I mentioned two weeks, but now I've shortened it down to one week. And no, I didn't add any hibiscus flowers to this one. I did like it initially, but I found I didn't like it near as much as just the plain citrus peels. And that's mostly orange with a little bit of grapefruit peels in there. And the next one over the green is the garlic oregano vi vinegar I'm making to add to my chicken's water, which is also going to help be to prevent viruses as well as adding the colloidal silver and then on the far end was the vin is the vinegar that's getting close to being done the nasturtium one that I started a few weeks back with dried nasturtium flowers usually I make it with fresh as you can see in this image here but since I was out I decided to use some of my excess dried flowers to go ahead and get a batch going since it's going to be a while before my fresh flowers are ready to start making vinegar with and if you're curious about that, I have videos on how to make vinegar. I'll link to my most recent and thorough one down below. It's, even though it's about fruit vinegar, I believe I mentioned making herb vinegars. There's only slight differences between the two, and that is the amount of sugar that you add. And I'll also link to the video I did on the many uses for vinegar and the hair care one, because I use the floral ones like this because nasturtiums are really good for your hair and they help promote hair growth. I use that as a hair rinse after I wash my hair. And sometimes all I use is the vinegar to wash my hair with. So I'll link to those videos and anything else I think will be helpful in regards to any of this other stuff that I mentioned. Okay, well that's my this and that for the week. Please share with us down below what's going on in your kitchen or in your garden this week. If anything, are you planting? Are you dehydrating? What's going on? Go ahead and share with us down below. And thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.